Today we're going to be talking about properties of parallelograms. And the definition of a parallelogram. So in a proof, if we know it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, then I can say it's a parallelogram by definition of a parallelogram. So the two opposite sides are going to be parallel. Okay, some properties of parallelograms. So if it's a parallelogram, parallelogram gives us opposite sides congruent. So this is going to be our reason in a proof. It's an abbreviation for each one of our properties. A parallelogram gives us opposite angles congruent. And then the diagonals bisect each other. So if I were to draw in our diagonal, so if I draw in the diagonal, I'm going to name it E. That means that diagonals bisect each other. That means that our, well, our abbreviation is parallelogram gives um, diagonals, diagonals, bisect each other. That means that E is the midpoint of DB and AC. Okay, first example. The figure is a parallelogram, solve for X and Y. Well, look at what we know. We know that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are going to be congruent. So setting up our equation, 2x plus y equals 36, because opposite sides are congruent, and 4x minus y equals 24, again, because the opposite sides are congruent. Now we add 2x and 4x is 6x. The y's cancel equals 60. So when I divide, x is going to be equal to 10. Now I need to solve for y. Use one of these two equations. I think it's easier if we use the top one. So I have 2 times 10 plus y equals 36. So 20 plus y equals 36 y is going to equal 16. Next example. Measure of angle 1 is 42. Measure of angle 2 is x squared. Angle CED, so the whole big angle, is equal to 13x. I need to find the measure of angle 2. Okay, so we know that opposite angles are congruent. So this whole big angle, angle CKD, is going to be equal to angle DCED, because opposite angles are congruent. So I know that x squared plus 42 equals 13x. Solve. When you have a quadratic, you have to set one side to be equal to zero. <clears throat> okay, then you factor. So x, x, two things that multiply to be 42, but add to be 13, minus six, minus seven, so x minus 6 equals 0, and x minus 7 equals 0, so x equals 6 or 7. Now always make sure you're answering the question. I need to find the measure of angle 2. So the measure of angle 2, well that's x squared. So the measure of angle 2, I have two possibilities. Can be 36, because that's 6 squared, or 49, which is 7 squared. Okay, a proof. 
We are given ABCD is a parallelogram and angle A is equal to angle E. I need to prove AB is equal to CE. Well, I know in a parallelogram, opposite sides are going to be congruent. So if I know it's a parallelogram, I already have my given written out, we are given this. Second step is, okay, I have a parallelogram. I know that AB is congruent to CD because a parallelogram gives opposite sides congruent. Now, I need to get CE equal to AB or CE equal to DC. Okay, well think about what we have here. Remember, AB is parallel to CD by definition of a parallelogram. AE could be considered a transversal. So with that transversal, I know angle A is going to be equal to angle CDE. So if that angle is equal to angle A, then I have my base angles of this triangle CDE equal. And thus, if the base angles are equal, the sides opposite those are going to be equal. Okay, so first, ABCD is a parallelogram. I need to say that angle CDE is equal to angle A. First, I need to say that AB is parallel to CD by definition of a parallelogram. Now because that is true, because of definition of a parallelogram, then I can say that angle A is congruent to angle C, D, E. Because, what's that special angle pair? That special angle pair is corresponding. So parallel lines gives us corresponding angles congruent. So then, now that I know that A is equal to C, D, E, E is also equal to A, we were given that, so therefore angle E is congruent to angle CDE by transitive. Now I have base angles of, an, of a triangle congruent. If base angles of a triangle are congruent, then these sides opposite those are congruent. So CD is congruent to CE. And that was our converse of our isosceles triangle theorem. Now that I know that, I know that since CD is equal to CE, but AB is also equal to CD, I know by transitive or substitution that AB is also equal to CE, and that's my transitive again or substitution. Okay, you have two lesson questions. Please solve to get values of X and Y.